All right. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, old AP for response problem. Uh, this one's from 1989. That would have been uh, my junior year of high school. Uh, it says, a negative charge, negative Q, is uniformly distributed throughout a sphere uh, of radius R shown. Um, it says positive point charge plus Q is kind of inset in the middle of that sphere of negative charge. And they want us to find a bunch of things. Uh, so here we go, my diagram. Let's see here. We've got this negative charge uh, kind of spread out in the sphere, right? This is all full of charge negative Q, right? Uh, and they tell us it's got a radius of big R. But right in the middle of it, inset there, there's a point charge there, right? That's plus Q. All right. So uh, that's a setup. And they say, part A, find the electric field outside at some radius R big, bigger than big R. Uh, so outside the sphere, uh, find the electric field strength. So you say, all right, E at R greater than R. And so you say, well, um, I know that if I have spherically symmetric charge, that I can treat it like all the charge was focused at the middle, was concentrated at the middle, and treat it like a point charge. Uh, and so you say, and the field from a point charge is kq over r squared, right? K e is kq over r squared. They say, but wait a minute. If I'm out here, I, I can treat all this negative like it's a negative q focused here. But wait, I already have a plus q there. Plus q and negative q, they're just going to cancel each other out. Their fields would cancel out, right? And have a, a negative kq over r squared and a positive kq over r squared, the total field is just going to be zero when I'm out there. That's it. The fields are going to cancel. So outside the sphere, you would feel no E field at all. They perfectly cancel there. Right? Part B. Part B, we like to find uh, the electric potential, the V value, outside the sphere. And you say, well, V at R greater than R. You say, now wait a minute. If there's no field out here to push against, there's no change in electric potential energy to have a charge here versus here versus here versus here. There's no field to have to push against. So there's no change in potential energy per charge. So moving around here, the V value should be constant anywhere outside. It should be the same value. There's no field to push against. You say, now wait a minute. I know if I go out to infinity, at infinity, we define V to be zero. And moving it from here, it doesn't take any work to push a charge here. They're not pushing against any field. So everywhere out here, the V value is the same. The V is just zero. Anywhere outside. Okay, so that was, uh, again, just kind of more of a conceptual question than a real calculation. Okay. Uh, part C, find the electric field inside the sphere now. At some distance, R less than R. So going out here, da, 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 right here, at little r, we'd like to know what's the electric field strength there. So to do that one, we're just going to say e at r less than r. Um, and you say, well, first of all, I know that out here, the e fields uh, inward from the negative and outward from the positive, perfectly balanced. But if I start heading in here, I remember from Gauss's law, it's just the charge inside the volume that matters, right? And so my field from outside, from this negative charge here, is going to basically, it's all going to cancel itself out. So I'm going to have less negatives in my bubble than I have positive in the bubble, some of the negatives outside. And so my Gaussian surface. And so I'm expecting to get a total charge positive. I'm going to have field going outward. So there will be an electric field inside uh, that sphere. The electric field will be radiating outward from the positive charge in the middle. Okay, that's what we're going to get. All right. So let's calculate that. All right. Now, um, what I would do is I, I'm just going to use Gauss's law. That's my favorite way of doing fields. Uh, right. If, if, whenever I have the opportunity, if I have a uh, symmetric enough situation. I do here. I want to find the E here. 
uh, the, the, the right surface to make is going to be a spherical surface, right? It's going to be the winning solution here. Make our winning Gaussian, uh, a spherical Gaussian surface. My E field by symmetry will be the same strength everywhere there, and it's going to be going the same direction. It's going to be going perpendicular to the surface everywhere. Uh, again, we can argue that geometrically. And so um, I'm just going to do my Gauss's law. Integral E dot dA is equal to my charge inside over epsilon naught. Um, we say E field strength is what we're trying to find. By symmetry, it's the same value over there, so that E can pop out of the integral. What's that cosine theta? He said that product is a cosine theta there. With that, my area vector always shoots straight out of my bubble. When the E field's going straight out of the bubble, the angle between them is zero. Cosine of zero is just going to make it plus one, which is what we want. Our flux is going to be outward, positive. Okay, and that's what we need. So that comes out. So I'm just left with the integral dA. Uh, that E pops out of the integral. Uh, the cosine theta is constant. It comes out. So just the integral of dA, that's just the A. It's just the area of that. So it's the surface area of a sphere. We recognize that formula as 4 pi r squared. On the other side, we say that wasn't too bad. The tricky part now is finding the charge that's in our bubble, that's in our Gaussian surface, that's enclosed. And you say, well, I'm going to have this plus q. But then there's going to be some fraction of this negative charge inside. Since the charge is uniformly distributed, that negative charge, if I had half the volume, I would have half the charge, a third of the volume, a third of the charge. I can just do a ratio of that. This is one of those I can do a simple ratio because it's uniformly distributed, where I can say the fraction of the volume inside the bubble is the fraction of that negative charge inside the bubble. So I'll do a nice simple ratio. All right. So for the negative charge, then, that Q in is to the total negative charge as the volume in, volume of the sphere, four thirds pi little r cube, that's the volume of the bubble, is to the volume of the whole negative charge, which is in 4 thirds pi, big r cubed. So I can set up that ratio, and so that negative charge that's in, this is just the negative charge in, okay? I have to add that plus q guy in here, but the negative charge in then is going to be equal to, so it's 4 thirds pi pi, it's just going to be equal to negative q r cubed over big r cubed. So that is going to go in here. So what is my, my charge inside? Well, inside I have this big plus Q guy. And I have this negative Q R cubed over R cubed. That's my charge in the bubble. Okay. There we go. That's my expression. Now I want to find the E field strength. I think I take this 4 pi R squared and divide it out over there. Hmm. All right. Yeah, sure, why not? So when I do that, um, what's that going to look like? That looks a little messy. I'm going to box that off. Uh, and we brought this and substituted it in here. Um, I'm going to do my work. I'm going to move this, this up here so I have a little more space, okay, to write. So just transferring that over here. E, actually, I'm going to go ahead and divide those 4 pi r squared. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and factor that cube out. 1 minus r cubed over r cubed. Um, and I've got that epsilon up. I can factor out. There we go. And now I'm dividing by 4 pi r squared. Right. Um, I guess it would be prettier if I just divide this r squared into each term. So this is going to be q over 4 pi epsilon. What over 4 pi epsilon? You know that's the Coulomb's law k. You can write it in terms of that if you want. I'm going to leave it in terms of epsilon naught. You know I've got 1 over r squared minus, this will cancel one of those r's in that term, r over r cubed. Okay. And that's my E field strength inside the bubble. Yep. Okay, that's what I got. Right. Okay. Um, I'm just what I'm doing right now is I'm thinking about these two terms 
and I'm trying to make sure, convince myself in my head, is this going to give me a net positive value to so my E fields uh, outward? But you know what? That's crazy because uh, that sign is not, there's, that's not a case. It's just the magnitude of the field. So I don't have to worry about that, um, I don't think. But if I did worry about it, I would say that big R is bigger than little r, right? Um, if I if, if this was if I was at the surface, the surface of the bubble, this R would cancel one. Of, little r would be big R, and this would bounce out to be zero. Do you see that? If I'm at the surface, little r equal to big R, big R would cancel once. I have one over big R squared and one over big R squared. They cancel. I get zero field at the surface, which is we know to be true. Okay, the field is zero out here. Okay, so good, 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 good. good. Right, and as, as R gets bigger, this field is going to get weaker, right? Yeah. In, uh, yeah, as R gets bigger, this field is going to get weaker, and that's what we need. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Yep. Okay, uh, where are we going from here? Let's go to part B. Okay. Part B, uh, I'm sorry, part, that was part C. Part D, last part. Uh, they want to find the potential outside the sphere. All right. And I may not have left myself enough space to do this properly. Uh, so I may have to erase a little bit as I go. That's okay. I want to know the V value. I'm sorry, inside this here. So at this spot, at some distance R inside, right there, we already found the E, but now we want to find what the V is there. All right? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use... The formula, delta V is negative integral of E dot dr. Okay? And so uh, when I find, now I'm trying to find a V, this is a delta V. So what I have to do is I have to go from a spot I already know the V value. Well, we know the V value is zero anywhere outside. So let's just go from here at the surface where we know V is zero. And let's go and find the delta V going from here to here. This is the path we're going to take from R equals uh, big R to R equals little r. Okay, doing this calculation, final minus initial, and our initial V will be zero, and that'll drop out. Does it make sense? So it'd be like my V at R minus my V at R, the big R. Okay, and I know that this is zero. Now that E field strength, that's this guy. So this is the guy, the function I'm going to be integrating. Um, did I give myself enough space? Or I'm going off camera here, probably. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll try to squeeze this in. Um, I'm just going to write E here for now. Um, that's it. That's the calculation we have to do. All right. So to find that D, okay, I'm just going to be uh, integrating this guy. I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is, which would be, would you be upset if I erase this mess now? No, you don't care if I erase this mess now. I can use that space. You don't need that still sticking around. Okay? I'm gonna come up here. So here we go. So my V, that I'm trying to find, the V at R, okay, I'm just gonna do this as we talk about. It's gonna be negative integral from R to R. And our E field is this. And look, it's a nice function. These are constant, constant. It's just in terms of R already. That's awesome. That's just thing I have to, sorry, I don't have to do any kind of goofy changing variable integration thing. That's awesome. Okay. Now, first of all, um, let's take care of that dot product, right? That dot says I want to, uh, that I want to look at the cosine of the angle between them. What's the angle between the E field and our path? 180. So that means however this calculation in here, this integral goes, where we're adding up all these little dot products, dot in the air, however this goes, our final answer for this had better be negative. And then the negative in the formula is going to make it a positive value. And that makes sense. As I head in close, out here the V is zero. As I go in, I'm getting closer and closer to this positive charge here. My V value is going to head to, uh, it's going to, going to head to zero. That makes sense. So my, my V value has got to, I'm sorry. 
I think that's going to be positive, is what I'm saying. As we get closer and closer to that positive chart, we thought it goes up, up, up. So that's good. Starts at zero and rises. Okay. Whew. Having that now. Okay. So I know that, again, just keep in mind that once I do this integral, whatever it comes out to be, we're going to make it negative, and it's going to cancel that negative out there, and we'll get a positive answer. So that's it. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Let's do this now. Okay. Um, when I integrate, if I've got a constant, I can factor it out. So that Q over 4 pi epsilon naught pops right out. So I said to integrate this expression. And you say, well, I can go ahead, I can do this. This is a polynomial. I can do it a term at a time. That's fine. So my integral of 1 over r squared, that would be like a negative uh, 1 over r, yeah? Like this is r to the minus 2. It would go up the power of the r to the minus 1, kick out a negative 1 front. Okay. And then this one, again, that big r cubed, that's a constant. All right, so we don't worry about that. Um, but I'm just going to take my integral of negative r, go up. You say, what's that going to be? Integral of r to the first power, it would have been up the power would have been r to the second power, right? So that would be a one half. That's going to be one two r cubed. Okay, so that's it. All right. Now I need to evaluate that from r to from r to r, right? From big r to little r, going from here. To here, from the surface of the sphere to that point inside. So that will be, um, and yeah, there's a negative from this formula here, and I need this answer to come out to be a negative. Uh, we'll deal with that in a second. I mean, should I put that cosine I'm going to be in there and then just double check at the end that it's getting us a negative? That's probably what I should do. I probably should go ahead and put that cosine 180, that negative in there, and at the end check my answer and make sure I'm getting a negative. But, yeah, 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 I should check that. So okay, let's do this. So if I do this, final minus initial, so it'll be 1 over r, you know, plus this, minus when I put big R in, yeah, fine. Minus uh, when I put the r in, 1 over r, and r squared over 2r squared, 1 over 2r. There we go. Um, I distribute the negative of subtracting this term, if that makes sense. All right, so that's that's my integral in there. So now I'm just going to kind of tidy it up a little bit, um, and I'm going to figure, uh, let's see here, these, I, I can combine these really nicely. If I multiply this by 2 over 2, uh, there we go. And so then I'm going to have a minus 2 over 2r and minus another 1 over 2r, so that would be like a minus 3 over 2r. Um, and so let's see here, we're going to get our total V here. Um, Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, um, 1 over R plus, uh, let's make that R squared over 2R cubed, and then we said this is a minus 2 over 2R minus another 1 over 2R, so that's minus 3 over 2R. Okay, um, now the only other thing is that I need my V value to end up being positive, which means I got to look at this thing and figure out if this is going to give me a negative value so to cancel this thing gives me a positive or whether I need to flip signs here. So um, it's difficult with the different denominators. Um, what I would do is I'm just going to like put in a practice, a sample value and see if it would work. What if uh, big R was 2 and little r is 1? Those are easy numbers to put in. So uh, little r is 1, big R is 2. Let's just say that and see if this comes out to be a negative value so we'll cancel that negative value. Positive. So here we go. Uh, 1 over 1 is 1. Uh, 3 over 2 times 2, if we're saying big R is 2, that would be 3 fourths. So 1 minus 3 fourths would be 1 fourth. And then I would add to that this positive quantity. So right now, this is going to give me a positive. And I need my answer to come out to be positive. So I would need to flip the signs on this, but then this negative would flip them back. So the, that's it. So this is going to give me a positive overall for my answer. So that is uh, that is it. that is my v value inside the sphere. All right. I mean, I can treat that as like a, a k if I want. K q times this, or one over four pi epsilon times q uh, times that expression. Okay, that's it.